My name is Adam Cove, I'm with Edson, and here we are on board a 1969 Luders 33. I'm going to walk you through doing a steering refit on this boat. Go ahead and start by disconnecting any external electronics or accessories that may be in the way. Next, remove the steering wheel from the shaft. Before we go any further, let's take a look at this over 40 year old pedestal. It is long overdue for replacement. Note the paint issues on the base and in other areas. The pedestal looks to have been touched up in an attempt to keep it going. Beyond a corroding body, the pedestal shaft bearing housings are also worn and there's play in the shaft. So it's fair to say that there are mechanical and aesthetic concerns at a quick glance. Let's get back to removing the pedestal. The next step is to remove the compass. Each compass is different, so check in with the manual or give us a call. Typically, only a few fasteners need to be removed. You want to disconnect the wire for the light too. Four bolts hold the compass base, engine control, and top plate to the pedestal. If they have been removed regularly for maintenance, you shouldn't have an issue. If they have sat for some time, try penetrating oil, or call us for further advice. Now, to remove the engine control, clevis pins and cotter pins must be removed from the clevis at the end of the engine control cables. For more details and a close-up view, check out our video that specifically highlights this procedure. With the engine control loose and now removable, the next step is to take out the chain of wire assembly. Go below deck, loosen the wire take-up eyes, and remove the wire rope clamps. The chain of wire is now free to extract from the top of the pedestal. If the chain of wire is older than 7 to 10 years, replace it, no questions asked. Now it's time to disconnect the engine control cables from the pedestal. Note the white nut cover under the autopilot stub. This secures a clamp that holds the conduit of the control cables. Since we will be removing the pedestal, I only need to disconnect the clamp and clear the cable from the end of the sprocket. Any electrical wiring should also be freed at this time. If a pedestal guard is installed, this will also need to be removed, as a new Vision 2 pedestal has one integrated. Start by removing the securing bolt or set screw that holds the guard to the feet. Then, just lift the entire assembly up and set it aside. Now, the guard feet need to be removed. This will be done from below deck by removing the nuts from the captive bolts or studs. The feet should then be free to remove. It is now time to remove the pedestal. If the nuts on the pedestal bolts are frozen, try penetrating oil. 
or a nut splitter as shown here. With the nuts split or freed up, remove them from the bolts. Be careful when removing the last one as the idle plate will drop. Note that the Vision 2 pedestal uses a new idler assembly. The pedestal is now free to remove, with only the bedding compound holding it in place. When loose, pull it up and over the engine control cables. There's a fair amount of aluminum and stainless or bronze here, so consider bringing it into your local scrapyard to cash it in. To move the engine control cables out of the way, move the engine control cable clamp and unscrew the clevises on the ends. The cables can be pulled down and out of the way for now. Make sure to retrieve your old idler at this time. This concludes removing your old pedestal.